Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the Umbrella Academy Season 2. Remember, at the end of Season 1, the Umbrella Academy had just failed to stop their sibling Banya from accidentally destroying the moon and causing the apocalypse. There was no way to stop it, so their brother number 5 used his time travel powers to get them out of there. But he can't really control his time traveling, so he ends up by himself in the 60s where a Soviet invasion is underway. And in this timeline, his siblings are all here fighting it with their full powers unlocked, the Umbrella Academy in superhero mode. But in the end, they still fail, and it's apocalypse time time again. But Five is picked up by our old friend Hazel, who warped him to safety one week earlier. Remember, he quit his job as an assassin for the Time Commission and lived happily ever after with his love, the Donut Lady. He's come out of retirement to help Five stop this apocalypse, but the Time Commission sent new assassins, these three blonde brothers, the Swedes. Tragically, they kill Hazel and damage the briefcase, so Five is stuck here on his own. Five notices someone's been monitoring this alleyway, so he pays him a visit, and it's a crazy conspiracy theorist who has seen all of his siblings land here one year apart. Yes, in the time jump, they all got split up. First to land is the hilarious is Klaus, along with, of course, his ghost brother Ben. Klaus had a great time living in the 60s. In fact, he started a new wave cult, which was fun for a while until it got old. Allison landed next, but she has not had a great time. Remember, time travel's no fun if you're not white. But she's found happiness here, met a wonderful man, and got married. Now they're working as civil rights leaders. Next was number one, the big man Luther, who without his siblings around, became a boxer working for a gangster. Vanya herself landed with amnesia, has no memory of who she is. She ended up working as a live-in nanny, and is the third wheel in this unhappy marriage, but has become real close with the wife. Last was Diego, who was a bit of a hero complex and realized his destiny was to save JFK. But running around yelling about the president's assassination landed him in a mental hospital. So Five tries to recruit his wayward siblings into stopping the apocalypse again. But this time they're not interested. They're all more concerned with their new lives here. Diego, though, is interested. He's like, great, bust me out of here. We'll save JFK. But he's like, you idiot, saving JFK is probably what starts the apocalypse. I'd better leave you here for now. But Diego's got a pseudo girlfriend in here, Lila, who's real resourceful and breaks him out. Five's like, fine, you guys can join, but forget about the JFK. K stuff. Five has a lead, the video that Hazel dropped him before he died, and turns out it's all about the JFK assassination. Told ya. But who's that on the grassy knoll? It's someone unexpected. Their adopted father, Sir Reginald Hargreaves. They go to his umbrella factory, which is of course a cover for his secret experiments, including the super cute baby Pogo. But Sir Reginald Hargreaves, in the prime of his life, doesn't appreciate intruders and easily fights him off. They track him down to a fancy party where they meet his girlfriend, their robot mom, or the living woman she was based on. Oh. They discover their dad is part of a secret society that is indeed planning to kill the president. But now they're interrupted when the Swedes bust in and oh, get Diego. He and Lila have fallen in love, but she doesn't save him. She goes to save five instead because those were her orders. She's working undercover for the handler. Years ago on a mission, she found Lila as a kid and raised her as her own to be a time travel assassin. Remember, she was shot at the end of season one, but it just grazed her. She's okay. But she gets some bad news from her boss, AJ, who is inexplicably a goldfish. She's been demoted and she's not happy about about that. And now she's got her own master plan to get back on top of the commission. Meanwhile, the other siblings are doing their own thing. Allison's organizing a protest which doesn't go well. She has to use her powers to save her husband. Vanya uses her powers to save the kid from drowning. When she gives him CPR, he gets some of her power, so watch out for that. And soon she and Sissy admit their feelings for each other. Oh, they're in love. Klaus goes to visit the younger version of his Vietnam boyfriend. Yeah, remember he was trapped there for a year last season and they fell in love, but he died. Hey kid, I'm your time traveling boyfriend from the future. You need to not enlist, which obviously doesn't go well. And Klaus starts drinking again on a depression bender. But finally, the siblings start reuniting, most notably Luther and Allison, who have had a crush on each other since they were teenagers. It is weird because they're adopted siblings, but the Umbrella Academy was more of a school than a family. But he hasn't yet told her how he feels, and when he finds out she's married, he goes on a depression bender of his own. But now, finally, they all get together. Umbrella Academy reunited. Five tries to keep him on track, but per usual, the family reunion turns into an awesome sibling dance party. But then it's time to meet their father, who's like, all right, you bunch of weirdos, what's going on? They explain they're his adopted superhero, kids from the future who need to stop him from killing JFK and causing the apocalypse. But he doesn't want to hear it. He's a real tough love kind of dad, bordering on no love kind of dad. So pretty soon, all their daddy issues come out and the conversation's derailed. So it's up to Five to keep the plot on track when he goes to visit Lila and the handler. She's willing to stop the apocalypse and get his family back home if he assassinates the board of directors for her. And remember, Five is a master assassin, one of the best the Time Commission ever had. And so Five helps her smack this fish. But she kind of betrays him. She gives him the briefcase, but it's only active for one hour. So as Five rushes to wrangle his wayward siblings, it's the now famous meme where he and Vanya pass each other driving. We have a ride home. We gotta go. But Vanya doesn't want to leave. She's gonna run off with Sissy and start a new life. Unfortunately, her husband found out and they're picked up by the cops and Vanya's gotta use her powers, which naturally lands her in FBI custody. Klaus, meanwhile, is having an argument with his ghost brother, Ben 
Ben, who's sick of being in the background all the time. So Klaus agrees to try something new and let Ben possess him for a while. And it's a real cute scene as Ben enjoys having a body. Allison is saying goodbye to her wonderful husband when they get a visit from the Swedes. Yeah, there was a whole thing where the handler was giving them fake missions that got one of them killed and blamed it on the Umbrella Academy. So to save her husband, Allison's got to use her powers again. I heard a rumor, you killed your brother. Oh, that's rough. But now the handler is in charge with her adopted daughter, Lila, as a right-hand woman. She apologizes to Diego, but drugs him and kidnaps him and recruits him to be in the time commission. So as the timer's ticking down, Klaus and Ben are the only ones that make it, so they've missed their ride, still stuck in the past. So Five has one last desperate idea, because you know who just came to town? His older self on assignment here to kill Kennedy before he quit the commission and went back in time in the first place. And so Five meets his older self, although remember, the young one is technically older. But being in the room with another version of you comes with a range of side effects, and so they devolve into sweaty, itchy, farty paranoia. Diego, meanwhile, is being put through orientation, but he immediately sneaks off and meets the mild-mannered Herb, who's leading the resistance against the handler. He helps Diego find out what causes this apocalypse, and turns out it's Vanya again. When she explodes, they assume it's the Russians and World War III. So Diego busts in to recruit some siblings, because it's happening right now. The FBI's torturing her, which is making her lose control. She's too strong. None of them can reach her, except Ghost Ben, who can walk right through and possesses her. Inside her mind, she remembers everything and feels bad about causing the apocalypse twice. But he's like, yo, you're a good person. You can control this. But unfortunately, being here is ripping him apart and Ghost Ben dies. But with his sacrifice, the day is saved. And with the apocalypse averted, Diego thinks he can still save JFK. Old Five, meanwhile, is getting ready to assassinate him when the Fives finally turn on each other and Luther's stuck in a teleporter fight. In the end, he sides with Young Five, though. It's like, quick, open the portal, preserve the time loop. But as they kick Old Five through, the briefcase is destroyed again. But now it's time to find out who actually does kill JFK. Diego thinks it's their father and he's running in and tackles him. Oh, but it's a decoy. And the shots ring out. John F. Kennedy killed as we know it. You just can't change history. It was this secret society that killed him, but turns out their father had no part of it. Now remember, in a very brief scene in season one, we found out that Sir Reginald Hargreaves is an alien? And now he's revealing himself, takes off his human mask, and kills this whole group. And so history is mostly preserved, although the Umbrella Academy are now America's most wanted. But now something's happening at Vanya's farm. She can tell the kid's in danger. They were trying to leave, but her husband didn't let her, and guns are dangerous. Oh, it went off, but because of her power, the bullet bounced back and killed his dad. And now he's like overloading, maybe starting another apocalypse. Vanya's like, yo fam, I need your help. And at first they shut her down again, but then it's a heartful scene when they all pile in the car like, hey, you're our sibling and we're with you. They get to the farm, but the handler's here too, and she's brought the whole army of time travel assassins for an epic final battle scene. Diego learns that he can control not just knives, but bullets too. Things still look bleak until Vanya joins the fray in full control of her power, and boom, takes them all out in one hit. Except what's this? The handler survived because Lila has Vanya powers too. And not just Vanya powers, she does the thing where she can take the powers of whoever she's next to. Yeah, remember the Umbrella Academy only included seven of the super babies, but there are a bunch more out there, Sir Reginald Hart Reeves didn't get. It seems Lila was one of them, and that's why the handler killed her parents and recruited her. Now, the handler just told her it was Five who killed her parents, but Five's like, yo, it was the handler who gave that order. She's playing ya. The siblings come together. Hey, you're one of us. And she and Diego have their big moment. I forgive ya. I love you, baby. But this touching moment is rudely interrupted by the handler busting in and killing all of them. She doesn't win, though, because the final Swede finally realizes she was playing them and kills her. So that's it. I guess the show's over. But Five tries something he's never tried before. When making big time jumps, he can't really control it but he figures let me just go back a few seconds just in time to save his family. Then the Swede busts in and kills the handler. Lila's confused though, so she grabs a briefcase and warps out on her own. So the time commission's under new management. They're happy to stop the apocalypse and let the Umbrella Academy back home. Vanya's like, yo girl, come with me, but time travel's a bit much. She's gonna go off for a simple life with her son, who by the way, still has some powers. So the Umbrella Academy's headed back to the future and with a functioning briefcase, it's nice and easy. They're back home the day after the original apocalypse, which didn't happen this time. So the day is saved. But this timeline is different because their father is still alive. He was disappointed with his weird dysfunctional super team, so he did things differently this time. He created not the Umbrella Academy, but the Sparrow Academy, and it's led by a mean emo haircut version of Ben. And that's where the Umbrella Academy Season 2 comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.